AMD might want to consider quaking in their boots with the benchmarks that just came out for the next generation Intel chips. Fastest internet that's ever been recorded over a long distance. And now you can buy the PS5 for your PC. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I could find on this very here internet. And in case you want to suggest an article that you want me to cover here on Hot News, you can do so over at our Discord server, which is linked in the video description. You can make sure to submit it in the Tech News channel, where I'll be sure to see it and include it in case it falls under things that I consider hot news, which this leaked benchmark stuff that's coming out from Intel definitely classifies as not who's. Because now we have qualification sample benchmarks coming out from the i9-12900K Alder Lake S chip, which is expected to have both eight big cores and eight little cores and have a 5.3 gigahertz turbo core boost. So the high efficiency and high performance cores being mixed together leads to it having a benchmark in Cinebench R20 of roughly 11,300. Now you want to compare that to the 5950X, which roughly scores in the 10,400 region. That would make Intel's Alder Lake flagship CPU 8% faster than AMD's flagship mainstream desktop part. And it's at this point that I can obviously hear everybody furiously tapping away in the comments saying, yeah, Brett, well, by the time Intel releases this, AMD is going to have a better CPU out. And while that might be what's canoodling in your brain noggin, there is no roadmap for AMD to release another CPU this year. And all indications that we're seeing from behind the scenes stuff of Zen 4 is that if it does get released, it's not going to be until at the very end of this year, but more than likely in 2022, whereas Alder Lake is looking to have a Q3 announcement and then a Q4 launch, which means that Intel would be at the top of the podium yet again if Cinebench scores are anything to go by. But considering the 11900K doesn't necessarily sit so far below AMD that it's not even worth considering, it actually does make some sense depending on price point and everything else. And especially with AMD raising their prices on the 5000 series chips, it ain't, Intel's still in the conversation regardless of how good AMD has gotten. We also have some indication of Alder Lake, which this is probably going to be one of its bigger downfalls, will not be allowed to run on anything besides Windows 11 because Intel's hybrid technology, the heterogeneous architecture, will require Windows 11 support in order for it to work properly, which if we can look at any other major architecture overhauls that have ever happened, likely will mean a staggered, stuttered and just probably bug ridden launch for Intel. So I'm not saying save up now to buy a 12900K. I am saying benchmarks make Intel look good and whether or not you're going to want to buy them is just depending on which side of the fanboy fence you sit on. But Intel's 10 nanometer DDR5 PCI Express 5.0 chip expected to launch sometime later this year. Are you excited for the 12900K? Let me know down below in the comments. But I know what should get you excited and that is fast internet with a demonstration of a world record happening 319 terabits per second internet transmission happening over 3,000 kilometers with four core optical fiber. This is not the fastest internet speed that has ever happened. That in fact goes to a record that was over 600 terabits per second, but this is the fastest and longest distance one. So it's like, if you look at the chart here, it, it's a record in both speed. And then also it's not the fastest, it's the second fastest, but then it's also the longest distance. So traveling and sending internet over really long distance, 3,000 kilometers means a lot because it means you can push more information through the tubes, all right? The internet is a series of tubes. It's not a big truck. You can't just dump stuff in it. The tubes go kerchoo. And Microsoft's next Surface Pro X might go kerchoo with an ARM-based laptop because there's now been pictures and evidence that the Surface Pro X is running Windows 11 with Qualcomm's ARM SoC, which is quite interesting. This would also help to explain why Microsoft canned Windows 10 X because they knew that they were just gonna bump out with 11 and make it so that it's all the same. So instead of naming it two different things, you can now get the Microsoft SQ2, which has eight cores, eight threads, runs on ARM, and also is on Windows 11, at least with the standard standard UI. Does this mean that Microsoft is trying to go for the hybrid approach where they're going to support both ARM and x86? Unlike Apple, who has decided that Mac OS just needs to get the heck out of Dodge with x86 and just merge into the sweet arms of ARM because they love them so much. 
Or could this be Microsoft's transition to getting all of us on ARM and they're gonna work on x86 emulation to make it so that everything becomes compatible and pull the exact same strategy that Apple's doing? We'll find out soon enough. But you know what we'll never find out? Whether or not Google Stadia will ever live up to its true potential, because it's gonna die. Let's just be very honest. Google Stadia at some point in the near future is gonna die. But they're not gonna go out without a fight with them announcing that they are going to increase the revenue share that goes to game developers, lowering it from 30% to a 50 15% of cut sales that Google takes. So it's it's a lower percentage, which means higher money for the developers starting on October 1st. And that's up to the first $3 million of sales through the end of 2023. But they're also going to be incentivizing with an affiliate program where Google will offer 70% of Stadia Pro revenue to the developers and publishers of pro games. And each game will earn a share of revenue based on how much of that game the Stadia player played in that month. So if if the game goes on Stadia Pro and somebody buys it, 70% of that revenue goes to the developers and then it's split amongst, it's like YouTube Premium, but for video games and this, all of this screams is, hey, game developers are abandoning our platform. We paid Ubisoft tens of millions of dollars per port, which was absurd and we have no money left. So the only way we could get you on here is if we somehow just like let you pay us less and then we somehow give you a revenue split. Can you please pretty, 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 please developers come save Stadia because it's a sinking ship. That's my opinion. But you know what else is a sinking ship right now? Crypto stonks, Bitcoin down 0.93% on the day to 3263364. That's a number that I read incorrectly. Ethereum down 4.35% to be under $2,000. 1935 is what's currently sitting at. Doge also slipping and sliding down below 20 cents. Its 24 hour drop is 3.65% as of the time of filming. GameStop also going down. The meme stonk not being safe harbor at all. Down nearly 5% to close at 180.06. AMC down a brutal 7.65% to close at 39.35. That's in the last several days, AMC has lost quite a bit of value. Obviously, if you're into the meme stonks, you know that everybody is saying, what the heck? I fixed it. I don't know what I was saying. So let's talk about the next thing, which is Apple's weather app won't give you the nice number. All right. Ha ha. We're in middle school. Apparently it did. Apparently Apple's weather app, at least in iOS 14.6, will never show you the number 69. If it's 69 degrees Fahrenheit out, if it's 69 degrees Celsius out, boy, you're burning. That's that's way too dang hot. Well, that also might explain why it's not happening. The weather app only showing either 68 or 70 degrees Celsius. And the speculation behind that is that it was taken from Celsius, which is the metric measurement, and then converting it into Fahrenheit, which would then create this issue of not ever having 69 degrees Fahrenheit. But now in iOS 15, it's been fixed. And that is something that I needed to report on because it was making the rounds on the interwebs. What's also making its rounds on the interwebs is the fact that Apple's going to charge you $99 for a MagSafe battery pack that just sticks to the back of your phone. All right. You just want to slurp it on there. The MagSafe battery pack essentially has one full charge charge in it, but don't it's it, it like <laughs> magnets. What's the opposite of magnets? Not what I was going to segue into. I was going to say repulsion, but that magnets have repulsion. I'm a dummy. Anyways, rockets talking about Blue Origin getting its FAA approval to actually launch into space, unlike Richard Branson, who went into subspace. And it's going to happen on July 20th with uh, Jeff Bezos, his brother and other people and somebody who paid $28 million to be on this flight. They're all going to go up. Hopefully they come down. I don't know. You people signed the petition to get them to stay up in space. I don't know what happens at that point. Whose problem is it? Is it America's problem? Is it like the UN's problem? Who, who goes to rescue stranded people in space. Uh, is it Bruce Willis? No, he died. Speaking of Bruce Willis, Persona is going to have its 25th anniversary event that's going to be happening later this year with them teasing that they're going to be launching seven new projects with the idea that Persona 6 may be amongst them, especially since there's a teaser unknown like protagonist who's been on their web page. But I'm looking forward to this event, which should be happening in September 2021. And the final announcement for everything that's going on is going to happen in oh, like a year from now in autumn of 2022. 
through. So we'll find out more about it, whether or not Persona 6 is coming out. We'll find out sometime soon. But what is coming out right now is AMD's 4700S desktop kits. They're appearing now at retailers. The first one showing up at the Indian PC Components retailer, Prime ABGB, listing the 4700S system for roughly $600 total, which includes both the CPU that's on there, the motherboard, it looks like a power supply is included, an SSD is included, a GT710, as well as that Sugo SG13 case from Silverstone. $600 for all of that isn't like super awful. It's not like a great system by any means. You could probably build a better system with an APU that's gonna crush that thing in its face, but you get a PS5 because it's a 4700S. So, nostalgia points? Can you be nostalgic about something that just came out? And can you AMD stop kicking Intel while they're down? Please stop, he's already dead. Go check out yesterday's episode of Hot News where I talk about AMD continuing to crush Intel in the region where the sun don't shine because Intel's not releasing products there anymore. See you in tomorrow's episode, my friends. Hot News off.